Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video this morning I am going to be giving you an update on some more transfer news. Of course, uh, the, obviously you know the transfer window is shut but obviously you know we are already uh, making plans for the summer transfer window because we do know that more signings are needed at Manchester United. So on this video, I am going to be giving you an update on Lataro Marti Martinez from Inter Milan. Also going to be giving you a bit more additional information regarding line on Messi. And also going to give you an update on Kula Bale. But I'll delve into the topics of, you know, Kula Bale and line on Messi a bit later on in the video. I am going to start with Lautaro Martinez from Inter Milan. So, reportedly, you know, Manchester United have expressed an interest in Lautaro Martinez from Inter Milan. Uh, also, to Barcelona have been in for him, Chelsea have been interested in him, also Man City have been in for him. So, several clubs are interested in the player. I think, you know, the player's preference is a move to Barcelona in the summer. Uh, reportedly, anywhere Man United are refusing to meet his asking price because he has got a release clause in his contract with Inter Milan. I think his release clause is around 111 million euros. That equates to around 94 million in pounds sterling. So that is his uh, current uh, release clause. And Manchester United are not willing to meet his release clause. I think Inter Milan are only willing to are only willing to sell him if any club are willing to uh, meet um, his uh, current uh, release clause. Now, I don't really know much about this player. You know, he's uh, only at uh, the age of 22. He is a striker. Obviously, you know, Man United have been looking for adequate replacement for Romelu Lukaku. I know we have got Odin Agalo in, but obviously, you know, we've only got him on loan until the end of the season. Obviously, reports have been coming out saying that if Odin Agalo does fail to impress, then that means Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could be sat to buy Manchester United. Now, obviously, you know, we paid three or four million pounds to get Odi and Agallo in on loan. Obviously, Man United are paying around a third of his wages, but, you know, he's given his overarching view um, on his move to Man United. And, you know, he said it's a dream come true. Obviously, he's a lifetime man, he's a lifelong Manchester United supporter, he's Odi and Agallo. <laughs> And hopefully he can do well. You know, I'm very, very glad we brought him in, to be quite honest with you, because I think he's a good cover-up for Rashford. He's also a good alternative to Anthony Martial. And Odi Nagalo does want to play in Anthony Martial's role. So I think Man United need to put him in at number nine. And then what we need to do is either drop Anthony Martial completely, reflect on his poor run of performances, or put him back on the left-hand side, because that's Martial's predominant position anywhere on that uh, current uh, left-hand side. So hopefully Odi Nagalo, you know, can, you know, score his goals. He will be making his debut against Chelsea after the international after the uh, winter break. Sorry, not international winter break. So, yeah, so Lautaro Martinez, um, he's been in the Milan for, is it quite a few years now? Um, obviously, he's a former racing club player, but I don't really know much about the player, to be um, quite um, honest with you. But all I know is he's got a 94 million release clause. I think he's scored like 16 goals in 27 games this season in the Serie A. I think since his arrival at Inter Milan, he has made around 47 Serie A appearances and scored around 17 goals. So he's a player that can score goals. Obviously, he hasn't played in the Premier League as yet. So would you would you be happy, you know, to recommend him into Manchester United and that? Um, but yeah. I don't really know much about uh, the player, but revert back to what I said, you know, I've, I hope Odi Nagalo can do well, you know, he did really, really well in China, when, uh, In China, you know, he did really, really well, you know, obviously he's played in the Premier League because he enjoyed three years with Watford, you know, I think he scored, was it like 16 goals in 55 Premier League appearances for Watford, 39 goals in 99 games in all competitions, so hopefully what he did at Watford, he can replicate at Manchester United. I think, you know, Man United made a mistake by getting rid of Romelu Lukaku. Now, I think we will regret it now because Lukaku now is doing really, really well into Milan. He's doing really, really well into Milan. You know, he enjoyed two years at Manchester United. He was exceptional in his first season. Obviously, didn't really replicate that in his second season. Because Lukaku didn't obviously you know get enough opportunities. The main explanation why Lukaku left is because he lost his place in the team. Because Solskjaer did reveal that you know Rashford was his uh, first choice ahead of Romelu Lukaku. But you know people said you know they had element of concerns about him. You know his first touch concerned people. He was a big game bottler. You know 
and all that, you know, didn't really get enough runs in behind, not 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 fast enough, but he still has got that proven pedigree in the Premier League. Um, I'm happy, you know, with the money we generated from his departure. You know, we got seventy odd million pounds for Lukaku. I didn't expect us to get that, so more or less we recoup the money that we paid for him from Everton a couple of years ago. So I was actually, you know, very very surprised in that um, aspect. But you know, some people will regret now us getting rid of Romelu Lukaku. Um, because, yeah, we just will. And um, Leon Lukaku scored 42 goals in 96 games in all competitions in the two years he was at Manchester United. Of course, Alexis Sanchez is coming back in the summer. Now, I think this is a bad decision from the football club by recommending Sanchez back. Obviously, you know, Man United and Solskjaer will probably see that, you know, if, when, if we bring him back, you know, he will add more transition in the final third. Obviously, you know, Sanchez, he's currently struggling at Inter Milan at the moment. He's on loan with Inter Milan until the end of the season. I think he's been out with some kind of injury. But, you know, Sanchez, you know, enjoyed 18 months at Manchester United. We got him in in January 2018 as part of a swap deal of Mkhitaryan going to Arsenal. And he was just very, very poor. He didn't exceed expectations as, as I expected him to. I expected him to do really, really well, Alexis Sanchez. Reflecting, we know what he did in his three and a half, four years with Arsenal. Also played under Pep Guardiola's guidance when he was younger at Barcelona. And I just thought he'd done really, really well, Alexis Sanchez. He is now, what, 31 or is he 32 years of age? But, you know, despite the fact that he's on loan with Inter Milan, we're still paying the vast majority of his wages. We're still paying him like £300,000 a week and Inter Milan are paying him like the other £100,000 a week. But, you know, we should, we don't, we can't, I don't think we should recommend him back in. You know, Solskjaer believes when he comes back, he will prove everybody wrong. So Sanchez is going to, you know, join up with the rest of the pre-season squad in the summer. So, yeah, he's definitely you not know, coming uh, back. But I think it's a bad uh, mistake by Manchester United. But I think the club in general anyway have made a lot of mistakes in the last six or seven years at least. And this is the main explanation, probably one of the main explanations why we've been so inconsistent. But, you know, the, I think we should have got rid of Sanchez uh, permanently. But on the other hand, we couldn't have done because I don't think there was any teams that could afford to have paid his wages off because Sanchez was on like 400 odd grand a week at Manchester United with bonuses and image rights. It risen up to around half a million pounds a week. But, yeah, you know, um, he's uh, currently uh, coming back. So, you know, would you like Lautaro, Lautaro Martinez at Manchester United? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I'll give you the news regarding Lionel Messi. I've been keeping up to date of what's been going on with Lionel Messi, at least in the last couple of days. Um, I think now Lionel Messi is uh, set to stay at Barcelona, despite his dispute he had with Barcelona sporting director Eric Abidal. Now, obviously, you know, there was speculation about him possibly reuniting with Pep Guardiola at Man City. Also, Man United have been in for him. In Milan, PSG, Real Madrid, Juventus. So there's been up to around five or six clubs interested in line on Messi because he's a clause in his contracts, which means he would be available on a free transfer this summer. But I think he's got. A, I think his release clause is a substantial amount. I think it's a good five, six hundred odd million pounds. But I don't think he's going to be leaving Barcelona. I did say, you know, the vast majority of these stories that have been coming out of, coming out about Lionel Messi, you know, I think, you know, they're just justifying their existence, existence the media on this. You know, he won't leave Barcelona, you know, will Lionel Messi because up until this point, Lionel Messi has spent the entirety of his career with Barcelona. You know, obviously, he's now 32 years of age. Despite his age, he's still one of the best players in the world. And, you know, he made his senior debut in 2003. Since then, he's gone on to make, you know, 469 appearances in the La Liga and scored 443 La Liga goals. So he holds a record for the most La Liga goals. He's also provided 177 La Liga assists, also 35 La Liga hat-tricks. You know, he's won the Ballon d'Or six times. He's won 34 trophies with Barcelona. And, you know, very, very um, good uh, player. Uh, revert back to what I said, he didn't uh, only have a dispute with Eric Abidal. He also had a dispute with Mark andre Testergen. Uh, that was a training ground dispute he had with him. Messi has still got around, by the way, 18 months left on his current contract. I think he's on around, is it, 
one million pounds a week or just below one million pounds a week. So I think he's actually you know the one of the he's the highest paid footballer in the world is Lionel Messi. But I don't see him leaving uh, Barcelona uh, like um, I mentioned, you know. But uh, Pep Guardiola's give his uh, more overarching view on it, and you know he believes that Lionel Messi, you know, will end his career at Barcelona. You know, this is a uh, Pep Guardiola's overarching view on it. But nah, Pep, uh, you know, Lionel Messi won't leave Barcelona this summer. You know what happened. It will not happen, guys. And um, I want to give you now uh, the news regarding Kula Bali. I don't really update you about Kula Bali that much because I don't really see him, you know, coming to Manchester United, Kula Bali. I know there's reports coming out, you know, allegedly saying that Man United are in poor position to sign Kula Bali in the summer. Maybe, you know, we, we are still keen on getting another centre half, and, you know, obviously, you know, we went in for Kula Bali last summer. Well, Reflecting back last summer, we was relentlessly, you know, linked with him. But obviously, you know, we didn't get a deal over the line for Kula Bali, so we ended up, you know, getting Harry Maguire instead. Obviously, you know, we paid £80 million for Harry Maguire. He's the most expensive defender in the world, and he's the second most expensive sign at the club. And I've got to say, I think Harry Maguire's done really, really well for Man United. I think he's had a few bad games here and there where he's made a lot of mistakes. I do agree on the aspects that Man United overpaid for him, but I think the club did make the right decision by giving him the captain set on a permanent basis. Now, you know, so should Man United try and get another centre half in the summer? Despite the fact that we did get Harry Maguire in, though, on the other hand, Man United are still conceding goals. I think it's on the likes of Liverpool, Sheffield, and Leicester that have conceded fewer goals than Manchester United. Um, obviously, you no, know, Victor Lindelof. I think he's a decent player, he's Victor Lindelof, you know, didn't settle in straight away, you know, wasn't so good in his first season, but then there was vast improvements in his second season, and I think this season he has mainly done well, Victor Lindelof, but he is totally comparison to Koulibaly. You know, imagine that, a centre-back partnership of Koulibaly and Harry Maguire in your team. Obviously, you know, last summer, you know, Napoli were not determined to sell him, I think the only way we would have got him last summer is if we was willing to pay around £150 million that Napoli were demanding. I think we had a bid turned down for Koulibaly last summer. I think he's been at Napoli now, is it a good five or six years? Obviously, he's a former Gent player. I think he's still under contract with Napoli until 2023. There is actually know several clubs that are in for Koulibaly, but I don't see Manchester United uh, getting him in in the summer. I think, again, it's just the media, you know, just define their existence on that particular story. I think it was around a £95 million pound bid we had turned down for Kula Bala last summer. But I feel as though that we don't really need a centre-half because I think Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof have complemented each other fantastically well in our back line. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, these still deficiencies in the squad that need to be addressed in the summer. I think we'll possibly need a left-back because obviously you know, you've got Luke Shaw who's struggling for consistency. Luke Shaw, and he's got, you know, a lot of problems He's had a lot of problems with injuries, you know, since his arrival at Manchester United. I think he had the same issue at Southampton. He's obviously experienced his Luke Shaw. You know, you've got Brandon Williams now. That's um, a better solution than Luke Shaw. But he's still inexperienced as Brandon Williams because Brandon Williams is in his first season in the senior squad with Manchester United. But I think he's done really, really well, to be fair. So left back's probably, you know, an area where Man United needs strengthen up. It's not one of the main priority areas. I think we also need a holding midfielder and we've got we've got to try and get a holding midfielder in, in the summer. I think we also possibly need a right winner. You know, so these still areas in the squad that need to be addressed. I think from my own perception in the summer, we need around three to four more signings at least if we are to be back to being a competitive elite level football club and if we are to be um, up there challenging for major honours. And despite the fact that we've been inconsistent for several years now, like I've mentioned, I still believe we've got the resources and the backing of the club to get the right calibre players that we do want in. Because don't forget, you know, Man United are... One of the biggest clubs in the world with a fantastic history. We're one of the richest clubs in the world as well. So, you know, we can still get uh, the players there that we do uh, want in. You know, Solskjaer has obviously, you know, he's recommended five players in, in three transfer windows. You know, last summer, he recommended Daniel James in for £15 million. 
hasn't been so good in the last month, but I've got to be honest, I think, you know, prior to that, he's done really, really well as Daniel James. I'm actually surprised in a way. I didn't expect him to play as many games as he has done. You know, I didn't expect that to happen. You know, I didn't expect him to be as good as he has been for the vast majority of this season. I think he's been overplaying him, Solskjaer, to be fair. You know, Amwan Bissaka's done really, really well. Very, very good right back. Doesn't show much in terms of attacking intent, but I think defensively, very, very good Amwan Bissaka. And Harry Maguire, you know, done well as well. And obviously in the January transfer window, he brought Bruno Fernandes in and also brought Odina Gallo in. And I thought Bruno Fernandes did really, really well in his debut against Wolves. You know, he had the most touches, don't forget, in the first half. He had like five shots. Three of them were on target. And that's very, very impressive. So he did well in his debut against Wolves. He will be making his second Premier League appearance against Chelsea with Bruno Fernandes. I think Bruno Fernandes will be, be a success at Man United. You know, my only element of concern is the usage of the player. You know, is Solskjaer going to keep in his predominant position? Because you know what he did against Wolves, he rotated him to a holding midfielder and then obviously he put Pereira as an attacking midfielder and this is something that Solskjaer cannot do. Basically, Bruno Fernandes is the adequate replacement for Paul Popper because Paul Popper is on his way out um, of the football club in the summer. You know... But yeah, I think he'll do really, really well at Manchester United, will Bruno Fernandes. Obviously, you know, we've all, obviously a lot of players have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. You know, I think we'll let around nine senior players, I think we've let around nine senior players leave the football club since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. Obviously, you know, we saw Valencia leave at the end of last season after he endured 10 years at Manchester United. We saw Chris Smalling go out on loan to Roma. There's no option to buy, but I think, you know, I don't think we'd be determined to bring Smalling back now. I think we want around £15 million if Roma are to make the deal permanent at the end of the loan. I think, you know, we made a mistake probably getting rid of Smalling because I think he was a pretty decent centre-half. You know, he enjoyed nine years at Man United. What we should have done is we should have got rid of Jones instead of Chris Smalling. That's what Man United should have done. Obviously, you know, Rojo went out on loan to Estudiantes, um, you know, but like I mentioned, you know, we've got a lot of centre-halves in the team. And you obviously now we've got Bay that's just come back from injury. We've got Fossil Mental that's just come back from injury. So obviously Rojo wasn't really going to get his opportunities anywhere. Ashley Young went to Winter Milan for £1.5 million after he endured eight and a half years at the club. And Solskjaer did actually say that, you know, we wouldn't let Ashley Young or Rojo go in the January transfer window, but they did. You know, Dan went to, Damien went to Parma. Herrera went to PSG. That's another mistake Manchester United made getting rid of Ander Herrera because I thought he enjoyed a good three and a half, four years out of the five years he was at Man United. And it infuriated me that we let him go on a free transfer. You know, Marion Fellaini, he enjoyed six years at the football club. You know, he went to China in January 2019. Obviously, you know, like I said, we let Lukaku go, we let Sanchez go. You know, Dean Ensign, of course, went out on loan to Sheffield United. You know, if he is to come back after his loan, you know, could he possibly, you know, become our number one goalkeeper, Dean Henderson? Because obviously we know that David De Gea is our number one, number one choice, number one. He's our first choice goalkeeper at the moment, David De Gea. Obviously, you know, he's been at Manchester United now for eight years as David De Gea. He's now into his ninth season at the football club. And I've got to say, analysing it, he's had a good seven, seven and a half years out of the nine years, out of the eight years he's been here. I don't think he's been so good, at least in the last year, as David De Gea. But I still think overall he's regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, reflecting on what he's done over the years at Manchester United. You know, David De Gea's appearance against Wolves was his 300th Premier League appearance for Manchester United. He's won everything here domestically. I think he's won the Smart Buzzard Play of the Year award like six, five, is it five times out of the last seven years, something like that, reflecting on how good, you know, David De Gea has been. But I think, you know, he has uh, done uh, really, really um, well for uh, the football club. I think probably Allenson, Liverpool's Allenson's one of the best goalkeepers in the world at this moment in time. But I still think David De Gea has done really, really well. Obviously, you've got Sergio Romero. That's our second-choice goalkeeper. Um, I think he 
he does he's done well Romero you know he does seem to keep a lot of clean sheets he tends to play in the cup games but I still don't think he'd be reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper we've got Lee Grant in who we got in the summer of 2018 I think he's only played once or twice since his arrival from Stoke was it you know like I mentioned Dean Henson's out on loan I think also Joel Pereira is out on loan but David De Gea is still um, our first choice goalkeeper definitely in that so I expect to see more departures in the summer and Solskjaer has confirmed there will be more departures this summer. The players expect to see go. He's probably no Phil Jones. Whether he does or not, I don't know. But I want him to anywhere. But I expect him to. You know, Jones is very inconsistent. Jones has been a long-serving player for Manchester United. He's now into his ninth season at Manchester United. He's Phil Jones and so he's endured eight years here. You know, I think, you know, Matic needs to be moved on. He's too much of a liability, too slow in that midfield. Doesn't complement our midfield whatsoever. And I think he's now into his third season in Manchester United. And analysing the vast majority of his tenure, he's been inconsistent. He's had the good game here and there. I thought he was good against Man City the last game he played him, but he's just too inconsistent, he's Matic. And, you know, I think we're at risk of now losing him on a free transfer at the end of the season because that's when his current contract expires. Unless Man United can get him some kind of contract extension, I don't know. But we paid £40 million to Matic, we overpaid for the player. I think we need to get rid of Andres Pereira because he's also becoming a liability and I think we've overplayed Andres Pereira this season. I think it's probably, you know, with the injury to McTominay where we've had to play Andres Pereira a lot. You know, Lingard, he's a liability. He's so inconsistent now, he's Lingard, you know, didn't register one goal or one single assist in the whole of last year in the Premier League. So that just indicates how inconsistent he's been. I was reading the reports the other day and it said Atletico Madrid and Roma were interested in Lingard. We can cash in for the player because he's got, what, 18 months left on his contract with an option to extend it for a further year. Lingard has made 131 appearances in the Premier League and scored 17 goals for Man United. But up until this point, he spent the entirety of his career with the club. He's had a few loan spells. You know, the loan spell with Leicester, Birmingham, Derby and Brighton. But he's just been uh, so inconsistent. He's had some good spells as Lingard, but at least in last year, he's just been very, very poor for Man United. And I think Solskjaer, and that's becoming infuriated with the player. You know, I think John needs to be moved on at the end of the season because I don't think he's emulated to that level as yet. I think he'll end up, you know, going on a free transfer Will Chong. You know, so there's still definitely no problematic players at Manchester United that do need to be moved on. Like I mentioned, I think Paul Pogba will leave Manchester United in the summer. Uh, a lot of United fans have got different perceptions on Paul Pogba. You know, some United fans would be determined to keep him. Some United fans, you know, would be happy to see him go. Paul Pogba's already told his teammates that he's leaving Manchester United in the summer. Now, as I updated you yesterday, it did confirm that Paul Pogba, you know, has been left out of... You know, the warm weather training camp in Spain. Uh, the main explanation for this is, is you know, because he's continuing his rehabilitation from his ankle injury because Paul Pop has sustained quite a few injuries this season. Due to his injuries, he's only played eight games this season as Paul Popper, so his appearances have been limited. But like I mentioned, he's told his teammates he will be leaving the football club this summer. I'm surprised that Paul Popper didn't leave last summer because obviously he wanted to leave last summer. Last summer, Real Madrid were relentlessly linked to him. Also, there was rumours about him possibly making a return back to Turin. And I think in the summer, he'll have a go to Real Madrid or he'll reunite with Juventus. But analysing the vast majority of Paul Popper's performances at Man United, they've been totally comparison to his ones in, you know, Turin. Because like I mentioned, he did endure four good years in Turin, did Popper. Reportedly, we've slashed around £30 million off his valuation. So we want around £150 million for him this summer. I think reflecting back last summer, we wanted £180 million. Real Madrid were not determined to meet that. I think Paul Popper now is entering the final year of his contract. Man United do have the option to extend it by a further year, but we're not going to extend his contract by a further year. But Paul Popper is still regarded as one of the best midfielders in the world. Obviously, we had... You know, obviously, Paul Pogba was subjected to a lot of transfer speculation under Jose Mourinho because he had a bad relationship with Mourinho. Also, I think we made a mistake getting rid of him when he was younger, when we had Paul Pogba under Alex Ferguson. We were actually, you know, let him go on a free transfer because I think 
we did that because his appearances were limited and he's only at the age of 26 now so he has still got a lot of uh, years ahead of him he's Pogba you know he's the most expensive player at the club you know he's obviously one of the highest player players at the club he's on around 290 grand a week but he is leaving the club in the summer he's Paul Pogba um, I think you know Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes we know would be a fantastic partnership in partnership in our midfield so when Pogba comes back you know we'll look much better in that midfield obviously when Tom Ware comes back we'll look much better in that midfield maybe the game against Chelsea could have come too soon for Pogba and Tom Ware because also Tom Ware has been left out of the training camp in Spain because he's obviously you know had a knee injury as Tom Ware so we'll look better in that midfield when they do come back um but on the other hand, you know, there's still players I would be determined to keep at Man United. You know, I'd keep Marcus Rashford because I think Marcus Rashford's been one of our best players this season. Obviously, before he got injured, he's going to be out for at least the next couple of months. Martial, I don't know about Martial yet. Um, if his bad run of form continues, I would get rid of him. I'd keep Lindelof. I think he's done well. I'd keep the three signs that were recommended in last summer. I'd, like I mentioned, I'd keep Matominway. I'd keep Fred because I think Fred's recently rejuvenated himself. I'd keep Juan Mata. I know Juan Mata doesn't really get in the team now. And obviously he's lost that yard of pace and he's aging up. But I do believe he's a good backup to Bruno Fernandes. You know, and obviously, you know, I'd obviously keep Mason Greenwood. You know, because Mason Greenwood's done really, really well. I think we need to start Mason Greenwood more in the Premier League. Like I've mentioned, he isn't getting enough starts in the Premier League, is Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood is on 10 senior goals this season in 20-odd first-team appearances. And I think he's a much better solution than Anthony Martial is Mason Greenwood. Don't forget, you can play him in number nine. You can also play him on the right, you know, Mason Greenwood. So, yeah. And there's a lot of young players in the squad that are developing and trying to improve. And a lot of the young upcoming players will become a success and you've got to give some of them time because like I mentioned you know some of them are in their first season in the senior squad Greenwood is you know Brandon Williams is James Garner is you know Chong is so yeah and that's one of the aspects of me, aspects of me that credits Solskjaer he has got a lot of trust with it in his young upcoming uh, players in there my perception on Solskjaer, he's, you know, he's not the long-term solution for Man United. You know, I credit him for, you know, the signings he brought in last summer and the signings he brought in in January, but obviously that doesn't change my perception on Solskjaer. It doesn't change the culture of the club because quite clearly, you know, there's cult there's cultural problems at the club and we need someone to come in to change the culture of the club. And um, we need, obviously, you know, we need to recommend a manager in with a proven pedigree of managers whose philosophy would be right for the club. You know, maybe it's not always the right solution getting a manager in, you know, with the proven pedigree in that because, on, you know, we've already had, you know, two managers, decent managers in, you know, through Louis van Gaal. Obviously, it didn't work out under Louis van Gaal because, obviously, the football was turgid and his philosophy wasn't right for the club. And also, you know, Jose Mourinho, he endured two and a half years at Manchester United, but I already give you the main explanations why it didn't work out under the Jose Mourinho era. And yeah, but you know, yeah, we do need um, a change um, of management because you know I've got a limit of concerns about Solskjaer. You know, tactically naive, has no plan A, has no plan B, doesn't really know how to change a game. Too inexperienced as a manager. I thought as a player, he was player, player, he was fantastic, but I think as a manager, he's totally a comparison. You know, just not good enough. Oligan and Solskjaer as a manager, and he has now been here for almost fourteen months, so he's been here almost eleven months as permanent boss of Solskjaer. And again, that was another mistake Man United made, giving him the job on a permanent basis. But reflecting back when he was the interim manager, he did really, really well. And obviously, then my perceptions were different regarding him because I thought then he was the right manager for Man United. But I can't remember the last time we won three games in a row in the Premier League in that. But he's not the right manager for uh, Manchester United. And we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers because we have sacked three managers since the, since the Alex Ferguson area. Of course, you saw Moyes go, Van Gaal went, Mourinho went. At one point, we had Giggs in as the interim manager, but he only man managed four games, did Ryan Giggs. He came in after we sacked uh, David Moyes. But it's not always, you know, the right you know, solution, always, you know, you know, persi persistently sacking managers in, it isn't always right. I think the only main explanation why Solskjaer is here at this moment in time is because he's a club legend. Disregarding him being a club legend, I think Solskjaer would have been, been sacked by the football club by now. 
But there's not only problems with the management, you know, obviously there's problems with the club's ownership, there's problems with the executive and obviously Man United want Ed Woodward and the Glazers out because I don't like the way the football club's been run in the last six or seven years. So there's problems, you know, there's also problems with the board because our board have been a liability for several years, you know, and I think we need to recommend a new board in. There's also problems on the pitch because a lot of aspects of our game need to improve. But, you know, we've got a few, quite a few ambitions this season and those ambitions are is to finish in the top four because we need top four this season so we can get Champions League football. Also want to get silverware on the board because we have lacked silverware in the last six or seven years. You know, we can win the Europe League this season and other routes to Champions League football, we can also win the FA Cup. So this is a very, very important. But Solskjaer will not see his two and, two and a half year deal out with the club. I think he will be sat by then. You know, unless something, you know, dramatically, something dramatic improves, to be quite honest with you. But, you know, we're not in that commanding position that we should be in. So that's everything to update today. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.